Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, applaud the five new directors um, who the co-op's membership has chosen to represent them. Uh, all of the newly elected board members ran on uh, platforms of change. A change in how the organization does business, change in the board's responsibility to the membership, change in openness and accountability, and change in attitude toward conservation and renewable sources of power. Uh, this is, it's this increased regard for the environment that we're here to address today. As you know, renewables and conservation have been on the front page a lot lately, and uh, rightly so. Uh, if you've gassed up your car, you know the world is in an energy crisis. And uh, what's more, ever-increasing emissions from the burning of fossil fuels has accelerated a polar meltdown and unprecedented global climate change. We're here to represent a large number of uh, PEC member owners in requesting that our co-op do its part and become part of the solution. It's exciting to have Juan Garza as the new leader because he comes to us with a solid history of meeting uh, environmental challenges. Under Juan's leadership, Austin Energy established aggressive goals for conservation and renewables and built trend-setting programs to help meet those goals. We expect him and the board to do nothing less here at the Pedernales Electric Co-op. Now I'd like to call on Tom Smitty Smith, Director of Public Citizen in Texas, to briefly outline why it's so urgent that we and other utilities across the state take immediate action to start reducing our fossil fuel use and reducing our energy footprint. Smitty? Thank you, Rick. Okay, thanks. My name is Tom Smith, and I'm better known as Smitty. I'm director of Public Citizens Texas office. And what the Perdinalis Electric Co-op is facing is a question of what kind of energy future do, does its membership want? A, a, an energy future, a smoking energy future full of coal plants and nuclear plants, or a clean energy future with renewables and energy efficiency as their primary source of electricity and energy. The good news is that nobody has the ability to generate more electricity with renewables than the state of Texas. And that most homes could easily save about 30% of the energy they're consuming through energy efficiency measures that pay for themselves in two years or less. The good news is that no state has more renewable energy potential than the state of Texas. And if we were to begin to harness that potential, we could put tens of thousands of people to work all over the state manufacturing the equipment to generate electricity with renewables and working in those renewable energy uh, resources. The bad news is that the Lower Colorado River Authority that supplies power to the Perdinalis Electric uh, Co-op here has recently announced that they're going to buy another 200 megawatts of coal-fired power from a power plant called Sandy Creek up by Waco. That's a risky choice to make and one that we hope gets reversed. But most importantly, what is to up today is an opportunity for this co-op and its membership to say it's time to change direction and we want cheaper, cleaner, and cooler sources of energy in our future. Let me turn it over to David Foster from Clean Water Action who will talk to you about what the members have had to say about this. Thank you, Smitty. Uh, my name is David Foster. I'm State Program Director for Clean Water Action here in Texas. Clean Water Action is a national nonprofit environmentalist organization. We focus on keeping toxins out of our air and especially water. We have 700,000 members nationwide, over 34,000 members here in Texas. We also have about 7,000 members here in the uh, PEC service area, and it's on their behalf that I'm speaking today. Now, as you probably know, the way we get our members is through door-to-door uh, -door canvassing. Uh, we send teams of organizers uh, into selected neighborhoods. We knock on doors. We invite people to discuss uh, important community issues about water quality or energy use and where we can we educate them and if they want we sign them up as members. We then take the further step of asking our members to uh, write a letter or sign a petition or sign a postcard to policymakers uh, about important community issues. Uh, over the last four and a half months Clean Water Action Canvas teams have been knocking on doors in the PEC service area and speaking with PEC members about energy conservation and renewable energy. Uh, we've talked to people uh, in Cedar Park and Leander, other parts of Williamson County. We've talked to people all the way down to Wimberley and Dripping Springs and Hayes County. We've talked to people in Western Travis County. We've talked to people 
uh, in the Circle C area, even some in the, in the city of Austin that are actually PEC members. And what we found, uh, and by the way, we all told we've knocked on about 24,000 doors, and we've spoken uh, with over 11,000 households. Uh, and what we found is that overwhelmingly people in the PEC service area want to see the PEC increase investments in energy efficiency and energy uh, renewable energy programs. Uh, we have accumulated about 4,500 postcards and letters to the management and the board of PEC asking for them to increase those kinds of investments. Now I have to say it's not very difficult these days to knock on somebody's door in the PEC service area and get them to talk about their co-op because it's been in the news a lot as you know and most of the attention has been on the need to reform governance of PEC. What we're here to do today though is to stress the importance of, of reforming how the PEC procures its energy and, and where that energy comes from. Uh, for all the reasons Smitty has laid out, uh, climate change, uh, mercury emissions from coal burning power plants, uh, we need to see the PEC invest in renewables and efficiency and not least they need to do that to save money for their own members. The cost of natural gas has tripled since 2003. It's gone up three times. Uh, the cost of coal has gone up. Most of the coal we use here in Texas comes from Wyoming. It's brought here in freight trains powered by diesel fuels. The cost of diesel has gone up and because of those cost increases associated with coal and natural gas, PEC members have seen their rates increase twice, twice alone in the last couple of months. So not only is energy efficiency and, and renewable energy better for the environment, it's also better for people's pocketbooks and that's the message we're here to deliver today. In terms of the campaigns that Clean Water has handled, mm -hmm. how is this campaign in particular compared to the other campaigns in terms of the response? Oh, I have to say this has been, we've had as much success with this campaign as we have had in any campaign I've ever worked on and I've been working with Clean Water Action since 1995. Uh, as I think Rick already said that uh, renewable energy is very much in the news lately. Uh, Texas has a real opportunity to become energy independent again. The PUC took a big step last week. Uh, by, I think it's tripling the transmission capacity to bring wind energy from West Texas to urban areas. Uh, and you can also bring solar energy along those same transmission lines. So it's been very much in the news. And, and people are concerned in the service area about their co-op because of all the scandals we know so much about. Uh, yeah, so the door is wide open. It's, it's an opportunity to reform not only the way the PEC is governed, but the nature of the energy that it, that it sells to its members.